rules and agree to House Resolution 156 as amended, a resolution calling for accountability and justice for the assassination of Boris Nemtsov. The clerk will report the title of the resolution. House Resolution 156, resolution calling for accountability and justice for the assassination of Boris Nemtsov. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from New York, Mr. Engel, and the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Kissinger, each will control 20 minutes. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from New York. I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on House Resolution 156 as amended, a resolution calling for accountability and justice for the assassination of Boris Nemtsov under consideration. Without objection, so ordered. Madam Speaker, at this time, I ask unanimous consent to include in the congressional record an exchange of letters between me and the Chairman of the Committee on Ways and Means on House Resolution 156 as amended. Without objection, so ordered. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in strong support of this resolution. I'm proud to have authored this measure with my colleague, Mr. McCall, the ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. The measure before us today condemns the assassination of Boris Nemtsov. Nemtsov was a brave advocate for democracy in Russia, calling for free elections and an end to the massive corruption at the Kremlin. I uh, remember when he uh, visited here and I had him uh, in my office. We took pictures just the other day. We were looking at them. Uh, he certainly uh, was uh, a champion of uh, freedom uh, in Russia and for it uh, met his demise. Uh, the fact that he was calling for free elections and an end to the massive corruption in the Kremlin put him right in Vladimir Putin's crosshairs. Now he joins a long list of brave journalists, human rights activists, and political opponents murdered by Putin's henchmen in their quest to silence all criticism of the Kremlin and stamp out any perceived threat to Putin's authoritarian regime. When I um, met Boris Nemtsov here in Washington in my office. He talked about his vision for a Russia freed from Putin's grip on power with open, fair elections, independent media, and a strong civil society. In the words of John McCain, Boris Nemtsov, and I quote, would not be oppressed by unjust laws or violence or by violence and fear. He lived for love and justice and truth, unquote. He was incredibly brave to take on these issues in a country where opposition to Putin often amounts to a death sentence. Just a few months after our conversation, as I mentioned before, he was murdered in cold blood in Moscow. Now it's been four years since his death, but there's been no proper investigation of his assassination and the cover-up and zero accountability for those responsible. That's certainly an outrage. This resolution condemns the Kremlin's systematic targeting of its political opponents and calls on the administration to impose sanctions on those responsible for Nemtsov's murder and cover-up. It also requires the administration to deliver to Congress a thorough report on Nemtsov's assassination. That's a critical part of this legislation because, sadly, the administration, in my opinion, hasn't done nearly enough to stand up to Russia and call out Putin's thuggery. So it's up to Congress to assert American leadership on this issue. I strongly support this bipartisan, bicameral measure, and I urge my colleagues to do the same. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman